Hi everyone, it's Todd from Lottery Post. Today we're introducing a new type of video to our channel that highlights a specific aspect of the Lottery Post website. Whether you're learning about the website for the first time or just filling in some gaps in your knowledge about the site, these videos are for you. If you find the video useful, please be sure to tap the like button and while you're at it, tap the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be notified when new videos are published. In this video, I'll be taking a close look at navigating through the Lottery Post website, which includes navigation elements that are found on every page, as well as common elements you'll find on many pages. I'll also be comparing how these things look and work on different devices, such as a phone, tablet, and computer. When I demonstrate various features, I'll start by demonstrating them on a computer, then I'll switch to see the same feature on a tablet, and then finally show it on a phone. The reason is that on a computer, with its much bigger screen, you can see all the elements of each page, which makes it easier for me to demonstrate. When you use the devices with smaller screens, the same elements are still there, but because the screen is smaller, we need to be a little more creative about how everything fits and operates. So to start off, we'll talk about the main elements at the top of the page, such as the banner, the menu, and so forth. And we'll also be looking at them as far as what it looks like when you're a guest. That is, you come in, you're not logged in, you don't have an account. Versus if you're a member, there's a few additional items added. And then we'll also look at usage with a mouse versus touch. And so let's, let's start there. Let's, let's start looking right up at the main menu, which you can follow my mouse here, is right above the mouse, forums, results, predictions, members, systems, and resources. These are the, the main menu items. And I'm looking at the screen currently the way a guest would. So if you, you come into Lottery Post for the first time, you're not logged in and you're just kind of seeing things for the first time. So as I'm using a mouse here, you'll see that as I move the mouse over the menu item, you'll see a submenu come up. Now this is only available when using a mouse. The drop down menus don't appear when you're just using a touch screen. It would be as if you just clicked directly on the word forums, for example. So let's say you're using a mouse and you can click right here. I click forums and you can see it jumped to the main forum page. Uh, if I go back and then I'm looking at it, um, I'm using a touch screen on this computer as well. I can actually just touch forums there and it goes to the same page, but you didn't see a drop down menu appear. So the main menu is the primary way you'll navigate the website. And using a mouse, as you can see in the drop downs, gives you access to a bunch of different things. But when you click on the main menu here, you're getting access to all the same items that were part of the main menu. So if I see here, I've got this active topics item, I've got search, I've got daily topics, and then all the forums listings here, I can access those things directly from the page as well. So I've got my active topics here, the button I can click, which is the same as clicking the active topics in the menu. I've got a daily topics, which is also in the menu. Search is represented up in the search bar up here. So, so all the things that are in the menu are also part of the main page. And you'll find that with all the menus. So if I click on, for example, maybe the systems, you'll see, or I didn't even click, I just highlighted the systems with a mouse and you can see all the items that are in here. If I click on the main systems button, I'll collapse this introduction here, you'll see the all those items that were in the menu are also directly on the main systems page as I scroll up the page here. You'll see all those things here that are represented. So, so in other words, when I'm using a touch screen and don't have access to these drop down menus, I still have access to all the things that are on the drop down menu. I just have them in a way that's more favorable for touch. So it's hard to navigate a drop down menu on a touch screen, whereas just kind of tapping the, the main menu item and then scrolling and tapping the item on the page is easier for a touch screen. So that's the main menu. The next item that appears on every page is the left menu, which is along here. And on a computer, this just appears as part of the page. It's, the, it's always on the left side of the page. If I flip over and see the left menu on a tablet, you'll see it doesn't have that here because the screen size is more narrow. There's not room for that. So all of that left menu is condensed into this menu button here. You click that or tap that and you'll see the same exact left menu appear that is scrollable here. You can access all the same items that are in that left menu on a tablet. On a phone, it's the same thing. You have the same menu button here appears here and you can scroll down the left menu there. 
Let's flip back to a computer and you can see that's here. Now the left menu is essentially just items that are already in the main menu. It's just they're frequently accessed items. So there it's it's more of a convenience feature for you. So if you wanted to access, let's say the, the news, well, I can access it from here, but I can also click news here. Um, if I wanted systems, I can click it on the left menu here, or I can just tap on the, the main menu item here. So it's just things that are frequently accessed We'll, we'll put them on the left menu just so it's easy to get to. The next area that's common to every page is the member area. So this is where we can start get, talking about, you know, logged in versus logged off and so forth. All, anything to do with a member access is, appears up here. When, and when you're a guest, you can see there's just two items to log in or to register. On a um, tablet, you'll see those same things appear right here, but on a phone, you'll see that they don't appear right here. Instead, you'll get you'll see this little user icon right here. And if you tap that, you'll see login, register, and some other items right there. And we'll get to those it other items in just a minute. Okay, so back on a computer, let's go ahead and log in and you can see what changes on the screen. So I'm gonna log in um, under a lottery post main account here. I typed my the username appears here, the password appears here, I click the login. Now the screen is adapted a little bit. You can see the, the main menu at the top has added a few items. So we have now a mail option, which is for use in sending private messages to other members and receiving private messages. You'll also see that there's an options item here. So these are options that are available as a member that you can change the way Lottery Post behaves, the way your account functions that you couldn't do as a guest. You'll also see this area here has changed to show my user icon as well as my username. And when I tap that, you'll see the same menu that appeared on a phone before. Now it just has some, some items that are useful for me as a logged in member. I can log off from here. I can view my profile, set my options and so forth. On a tablet, now I can see that I'm logged in and I get the same user menu over here. On a phone, it's the same thing. I refresh the screen. Um, I can see that I've got that now that generic user icon has been changed into my actual user icon that I've set for my account. And I have those same options available here. You'll also see um, at the bottom of the menu here, it has my um, member status. So you can see my Lottery Post account is a platinum membership. I've been a member since 2012 and last visit time and also the information about when your account expires. Now, a couple more things about the main menu. Now that there's more items in this in the menu and we're logged in on a phone, you can see that it's only one row of icons and I'm not seeing everything that's on the menu. For example, if I switch back to a computer, you can see I've got resources and options to the right here. But on a phone, I only stop at systems. And that's because this is a scrollable area. So if I just swipe this menu over to the right there, you can see the other items there and, and there's a little hint on the screen right here a little shadow area area showing you that there's more items to that direction on this side there's no shadow we're now scrolled all the way to that direction and watch as I pull this over now you can see I can pull it in either direction so just a way to save space on the phone screen to be able to see everything another thing is this mail icon right here will actually light up if you have a new message so if I just go to another computer and go ahead and, and send myself a, a private message. Now I'll refresh the page, which on the phone, you can see there's a, a nice little handy refresh icon right in the top banner. Uh, I get alerted that I have a new private message. I can hit OK and go directly to the private message, or I can see that there's a red icon. The mail icon now is, is turned into a red icon, signifying that I have new mail waiting. So if I tap on that, you'll see there's the message I just sent from my Todd account. Hello there. And I can tap on the message and I can say, I can read the message. So I'll just delete that, that test message. Now you'll see after I deleted it, the red envelope went away, meaning I have no more unread messages in my private message inbox. So I'll just tap that to go back home. I tapped the logo. I could have also tapped the, the back button. So. That'll, that'll kind of bring me to another area where we have certain things at the top of the screen that are tappable. This is another area where there's some things on a phone that are slightly different than on a computer. So let's say one of the things I just tapped and showed you, I tapped the, um, the Lottery Post logo. It brought me back to the home screen. But 
there's other behaviors for that on the phone. So if I'm scrolled down farther on the page and, and not at the top of the page, now if I tap the Lottery Post logo, the first thing it does is it scrolls to the top of the page. So it's kind of a convenience feature if you're on Android, iPhone, whatever, you can tap that logo and it'll scroll you to the top of the page. That becomes important. In, it, in an iPhone, there's a default behavior that if you tap at the top of the page, it'll, it'll quickly scroll you back up. But on Android, that doesn't exist. So this is kind of um, providing that capability of scrolling to the top for any device, whether it's Android or iPhone. On a desktop computer, you don't really have that. So if you scroll down, your logo is not more visible anymore. Instead, what we do is you'll notice this little up arrow that appears at the bottom of the screen. If, you're, if you've scrolled down a bit, then it appears. Now you can see I scrolled back to the top, it disappeared. I'm gonna scroll down and all of a sudden that little disc appears. You tap that and now you're back at the top. So there's a difference between how something works on a phone versus a computer. And then on, on a uh, tablet computer, we also have this disc here. You can tap and, and go back to the top. On a phone, again, I mentioned before, there's a, there's a refresh button here. There's a back button that'll take you back to where you were every time. And those appear on a phone because on a phone that's different than a computer. On a phone, you can actually pin an icon to your home screen on your phone. And when you launch Lottery Post in that way, it doesn't show it to you in a regular browser with back buttons and, and things like that. So this is a way on the phone that if you do pin this to your home screen, you still retain the ability to have a refresh and a back button, even though it doesn't open in a typical browser frame with those features. Another thing that's different on a phone is that you'll see this, this share icon here. When you're launching this again from a home screen icon, that won't appear. So we've, we've added one here so that you can quickly get into your share uh, feature on your phone. Okay, so that covers features that are a part of every page. Let's start to dive into features that you'll find that are on many pages, not necessarily every page, but there are common controls and, and features that you'll find on many of the pages you go to. So let's start with a calendar control. Let's say you're viewing uh, the Daily Numbers Games page, which is a very popular page that shows pick three, pick four, optionally pick two and pick five games in a nice grid format. You can see I'm viewing the date that I'm recording this video, which is on Wednesday, November 30th. I'm viewing the, the drawings that have taken place and there's a few midday drawings that have already come in. But I wanna actually look at yesterday's games instead. You can see that this uh, date here is within this clickable control with the down arrow here. If I just tap anywhere on that, it'll show me a little calendar control that I can go to whatever date I like. So I wanted to go to yesterday, which is the 29th. I tap on that and now I'm viewing the 29th date. And you can see it's all filled in because all the drawings for yesterday obviously have occurred. You'll also find calendar controls on the results pages. So if I go to a results page for say Delaware and I'm looking at the latest results here, I can tap that and see a calendar control. I can also see yesterday's or maybe a October 1st lottery results just by using the calendar control. Another type of common control that you'll find is for pop-up menus for games and for members. So let's say, for example, I go to the predictions page and I'll scroll down a little bit and you can see the latest members who have posted predictions in this table right here. You can see both the member names as well as games that they posted. So when you're looking at these, you'll see that, well, first of all, for, for the member names, you'll see some of them in bright yellow You'll see some that are without any highlighting. Uh, and then you'll see some like, like this here that are in a gold color. That indicates the type of member they are. So if you're wondering why there's some highlighted, the bright yellow members are platinum members. The more gold color, like a darker yellow, are gold members. And then standard members are without any highlight on them, just so you can see who you're interacting with. So the other thing you'll notice about the member names is that they have a gray underline under them. And also you'll find game names with a gray underline under them. The gray underline indicates that when you tap on that, you'll see a pop-up menu of options that are available for that member or that game. So for example, let's tap on four for me here. And you'll see all the things that you can do here the quick actions you could do for, for that member. You can send them a private message, you can look at their profile, see their shared favorites, and so forth. 
Um, one of the, the common uses is to see recent, member, or recent posts that they've made on the forums. Um, so for example, if I tap that for four for me, you can see the recent forum posts. We'll navigate back to the predictions page and we'll see the same thing with the game names. So if I'm gonna look at, let's say, uh, this game here, pick three morning for Texas, I'm gonna tap on that and you'll see all the various options that are available, the quick options that are available for that particular game. You can see uh, the game information, look at the past results for that game, search the past results, see drawing statistics, see a calendar view of the, the results. And there are some other options here. We can go right to the deflate menu um, to deflate past results. We can inspect them. We can see pick three charts of different types, lots of options. Um, and you'll notice that if you click on a different type of game, let's say Florida Fantasy V here, different options appear. So whereas in a pick three game, you have the ability to deflate results and so forth. Those types of options aren't available for pick five lotto style game. So they're not even gonna appear on the menu then. So these are the quick actions that are available for that particular game type. So those are the pop-up menus that are available for members and for games. Another type of common control you'll find at the top of pages are what we call breadcrumbs. And that's the area right up here. You'll see there's a, a home link if you tap that, you'll naturally go back to the home page. And this one that is a, not a link, it's just a, a label saying predictions, that tells you where you are on your pages that you navigate. So as you go deeper into a section, you'll see that that breadcrumb starts to add links to go back to the previous pages that you were on. Uh, this can be useful for, especially in the results pages. So if you're looking at, let's say you're looking at the main results page, well, it just says home and lottery results is the page you're on. Then you'll tap into a state. Let's say you click into New Jersey. Now you'll see the page that we were on, lottery results, appears as a link allowing you to go right back to that page. And now it shows that we're in New Jersey. Uh, if you go into a particular game, like let's say we tap on the pick three logo here to go into the information page for that game. I tap on it. Now you'll see New Jersey is a link to allow us to go back there. You can also jump right back to the main lottery results or even back to the home page. So you can see it's, it's building up a trail of, of how we navigate into a section and then allows you to jump right back to it. Now for a computer, it is useful to be able to do that, but you also have always available to you a forward and a back button in your browser. So you could choose either way. Uh, when you're using a phone, you'll have fewer options that tend to be available to you. It's, it's um, maybe a, a back button might not be as readily available on a phone. So it becomes maybe more um, useful on a phone to be able to quickly jump back. So if we tap the same items on a phone to get to the same page, um, well, there is the back button here, but it can be more useful on a phone to be able to quickly navigate back to a previous page just by tapping on the page itself rather than hunting down the back button and so forth. So that's breadcrumbs. Now, one other thing that we kind of breezed past earlier in the demonstration um, that I'm gonna go back to is the idea of introductions of the page. We were on the systems page and the first thing I did was, was I got the introduction out of the way. You'll see the introduction is a, is a text area that appears that kind of describes the page at the top and this is designed for people who are looking at lottery posts for the first time to describe kind of the usage of the page, how it works, maybe some very important parts of the page um, that you'll need to know before you start getting into it. And then as I showed you, the introductions are designed to be able to collapse. And you'll also notice that when I came back into the systems page, maybe where it's at the results page, I come back to systems and it's still collapsed. So the page will remember the fact that you collapsed the introduction so that the next time you don't have to keep doing that every time you come to the page. Now the computer, phone, or tablet that you're using remembers whether you showed or hide an introduction on that device. So then if you showing the introduction on your computer, that doesn't affect your phone because that's a separate device. It has its own memory of whether or not you're showing introductions. Also, the fact that you've shown or hidden the introduction, it remembers that fact in the cookie. So if you clear the cookies on your phone or computer, you're going to erase the memory of whether your introductions are shown or hidden. So just keep that in mind if you ever happen to clear the cookies on your device, you'll have to go through and, and reset these the way you like.
Okay, so that's introductions. Uh, another feature that I wanted to show is the ability to page through contents. Now there's, there's many parts of the website that have normal things, normal page numbers that you would use to navigate to different pages of something. For example, in the forums, you'll notice that I went into the lottery discussion forum and you'll see page numbers here. So page one of 1063. Um, you can go to the next page by tapping the next button or you can click the down arrow to go to directly to a page, go to the 10th page there and so forth, coming back to the first page. But there's other web pages that don't use, that, that go through pages of content without using page controls. They'll automatically load the next page for you. And that's sometimes referred to as infinite scrolling. And, and you'll see the same type of scrolling that you'd find in let's say Twitter, as you're going through your Twitter feed and new content is loading at the bottom automatically. This works in the same way. So let's say we'll go to the active topics page, which shows you all of the forum posts that have happened since the last time you visited the website. In this case, it's saying that the last time I visited was on November 23rd. So as I scroll down, now keep an eye on the scroll bar on the side of the screen here. You can see I've only got, it looks like I only have a little more to go, but as I get close to the bottom of the page, it's automatically added more items there for me to scroll through and it will keep adding more items until I get to the bottom of my list. So the types of pages that this feature is used on are, are pages that don't really require page numbers. They're really designed to just see a certain amount of, of text in, in order and not kind of jumping around. You see I've reached the end of the page here, the end of my active topic, so it, um, it doesn't need to keep adding more. And again, I can go to the top of the page just by tapping on that little circle there. So that's infinite scroll. Now, one other thing that you might notice on many parts of the website when you're viewing uh, anything to do with the forums and forum listings is you'll notice you can tap anywhere inside the message to go directly to it. But you'll also notice that when I go back here, you'll notice this little green arrow on the right here. You'll see the green arrow here, um, if I go back to the home page, you'll see this listing of forum posts, the latest forum posts have little green arrows. And what the green arrow indicates is that when you tap on that, it's going to go directly to that particular post. So whereas if I tap anywhere in the main part of the post here, it's going to the first post of that thread. If I go back and then I tap instead on the, well, I guess there's been a new post there since I added that one or since I viewed that one. If I tap instead on the green arrow, it's going to go right to the post, that last post by Larry888. So you can see it didn't, instead of going to the first post of that topic, now it's gone to the last page, page eight of eight, and it's automatically scrolled down to that. And that feature works the same no matter what device you're looking at. So for example, on a phone, if I'm at the, the main lottery post webpage, well, first you'll notice that the that right part of the screen doesn't exist here. If I go back to the home page, okay, so I've got the left navigation we know appears with the that one menu button. We've got the main content section here, and this right, what we, I guess you could call it a right rail or a right section of the page, doesn't even exist when I went over to the phone. What happens on the phone is um, we've rearranged the page. Remember I said on a phone there's limited space, we have to be creative on the home page it actually takes that right rail and it places it below the main section. So you'll see all the same parts of the screen are available, but just in a different way. So uh, now we have that green arrow, we can tap on a phone, it works the same way. It went right to the last page and there you can see it scrolled to that particular post. So that covers the basics of navigating the Lottery Post website. In future videos, we plan to cover topics like the forums, the prediction systems, highlighting some of the resources and systems available on our website, using the text editor, and lots of other things. We're also very open to hearing your suggestions, so please feel free to post a comment below and let us know your thoughts. Please also remember to like this video and tap the subscribe button as both of those things really help out our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon in our next video. Take care.